Right, dry air currents. Then you know the dry air means lack of humidity, lack of amount of water vapor. Then therefore it will increase. What is that? The evaporation of water from the water bodies and other surfaces. That is we call as what is evaporation of water. When water evaporates from plant, we call as transpiration. That word we call as what is that? Transpiration in plants. Then uh, other one is it's increasing the absorption of groundwater. Now plants, when they are that that uh, transpirate more water, they are releasing more water. What will be happen? They absorb more water from the soil. Then the soil water level gradually decreases. The plant absorb it and releasing to the atmosphere as transpiration. So that is one problem. Other thing is fountains dry up due to the reduction of groundwater. Now groundwater level gradually goes down. Why plants are rapidly absorbing this? And other thing is due to the evaporation and absorption of plants, the water bed is gradually decreasing. Right? Then that can also take in place. Then these conditions may cause mm -hmm. what is it? Mainly drought condition. Mm -hmm. Then next one is what is that? El Nino condition. What is this El Nino? It's a phenomenon caused by increase of the temperature of the surface of water in the yeah, Pacific Ocean. When the temperature difference in especially in ocean water, they are making what is that? Cold water currents as well as hot water currents. What are water currents? Lamai water current means just like that uh, rivers. Now we know that we experience rivers on the land. Just like that, inside the water, also there are just like river, like that water, streams are moving. Sometimes you may heard that uh, uh, in some areas, now some that uh, cement drains that constructed in that dry zone, then now when we went for that, uh, take a shower, sometimes we may feel that, uh, that uh, under level water going so faster than the surface. Just like that. Now there are some river like that water running it inside the ocean water. So there we are mentioning water currents, right? Now here what's happened here, you can identify. Now due to this uh, temperature difference, what will happen? Look at here. With the increase of the temperature of the surface water in the ocean, normal circulation pattern of global air current and oceanic water currents are changing. Then not only the water current changing here, global wind pattern, air pattern also changing. Then one area receiving heavy rains and other area receiving drought condition. One area receiving heavy rains. That means it, the condition become unbalanced. One area receiving more water and other one, other area receiving lack of water. So that is we call as what is that? Yes, El Nino condition. Now we will see El Nino condition. A natural force of nature, unlike any other. El Nino is capable of unleashing a serious climate change and natural disasters that span from Alaska all the way to South America and beyond. What causes them? And how are they affected by it? El Nino is not a storm, but rather a weather phenomenon in the Pacific Ocean. During an El Nino, the surface water temperature warms up, leading to complex weather patterns. South American fishermen in the 19th century describing warmer waters during Christmas time coined the name El Nino, the Spanish for the blessed child. Nowadays, when sea surface temperatures in the equatorial Pacific Ocean rise 0.5 degrees Celsius over their historic average for three consecutive months, 
and was atmospheric conditions and rainfall patterns shift accordingly, the ice is officially declared an El Nino. An El Nino event takes place about every two to seven years. Normal east to west treatment over the Pacific weaken, and warm water that normally travels westward is now moving for the east. Moisture then rises to the air, and the effects of El Nino are felt in the ocean. In the ocean, warm water pulls the water down, blocking the important upwelling of the nutrient-rich water from the bottom. This causes some marine life to migrate to the water. Animals that normally feed on the sea life suffer, and fisheries throughout Central and South America suffer too. But El Nino's most noticeable repercussions are felt on land. In the western United States and Central and South America, the warm air and moisture lead to increased storms, rainfall, floods, loss of life and property, and the increase of some vector-borne diseases like malaria, even in places where they don't normally occur. In Southeast Asia and Australia, the opposite takes place. These areas suffer from drought, wildfires, and colder ocean water. In 1997 and 98, the world experienced the biggest El Nino in recorded history. Some estimates explain that El Nino for 2,100 deaths and $33 billion in damage. Mongolia saw temperatures reach 108 degrees Fahrenheit. There was record flooding in Peru. And the U.S. saw storms in the Gulf Coast, flash flooding from California to Mississippi, and tornadoes in Florida. Scientists are now better able to predict if and when an El Nino event will take place. This helps communities better prepare for the changes in weather patterns and better adapt to its repercussions. Hi. Then you got the idea about El Nino effect. Then, influence of the El Nino phenomenon, one is, what is that? Yes, droughts as well as rain. That means one time it will receiving as a drought condition, one time it is receiving as a heavy rain condition, depending on the condition of the El Nino. Right. Now, here, influence of some human activities. Now, what are the, they have to your attention. What are the other Human activities uh, may be responsible. One is drying up of water resources and decrease the water retention capacity in the soil. Both are affected to our human life also. And last, uh, other one is, what is it? Global warming. What is global warming? Globe get warm. That is we call global warming. That means increase in the Global temperature by a certain level, is it affecting to us? What will happen? Just imagine nearby polar region, if the temperature increasing, the glaciers and ice begins to melt and get added to the sea or ocean water. Then the sea water level goes up. So the small island get drowned. <laughs> so it is severe effect, right? Then now uh, human activity that may cause droughts. One is what is that? Seepage of rainwater into the soil decrease due to the various construction. That means now, just imagine in a uh, particular area, and I did same thing happened to in our living area also. Now previously now it is the uh, just cloud the uh, land there, and this uh, land means uh, it's a uh, it was a tea estate. It is block out time now for for the people. Then now at the beginning, now we started to make a house within there. Now what will be happen that when we are making a house means what is that? Now just imagine this building. Previously that uh, ground is exposed to the environment and rainwater can receive to the ground. But now it is covered by a building and with a roof. Now is that water receiving to that land? No, that means more land area is covered by a building. 
same manner when we consider some area if there are a number of houses are gradually increasing that means that soil is not receiving sufficient amount of water by the why it is the surface is covered now these days now we can see even the that uh, they are landing area also covered by concrete why to avoid from mud and other just like leach and other any they are covered then they are missing now no mud then then now that's good right now some houses we can identify right then number two what is that wastage of water by irregular and overuse right sometimes we are using that water use overuse but now in sri lanka now future it won't happen why because that water bill also too much high therefore now then parents are always what is that managing try to that control the usage of water by their children right now, now enough now come out yes now this may be happen on tv then decrease the water retention capacity in soil and accelerate soil erosion that is also due to human activity just like slope slope area get cultivated then now that soil that retention capacity is decreasing then another thing is what is that deforestation then uh, in deforestation that is directly directly affecting for the water cycle right now those are the major reasons and now finally we can mention what is that due to the global warming the global rain water or oh, raining rainfall pattern is changing that is also affecting on it right remember that then here as a summary now we can get a consider about the drought condition look at here the drought condition is forming due to the scarcity of water why scarcity of water is originated due to the change of rainfall pattern and decrease in the rainfall why it is happening due to two major reasons now what are the two major reasons one is natural reason and other one we are mentioning due to human activities what are the natural reasons one is change of the that monsoon condition then dry winds and el nino condition then human activities irregular or unwanted constructions irregular water usage and deforestation and releasing greenhouse gases to the environment and then that is leads to the global warming condition right remember that one so drought is basically affect the environment based on the environmental issues and various socio economic right issues may occur right now we discuss that one now here what are the influences there due to the droughts then we are affecting with water mainly ground water as well as surface water they are affected another thing is it is affecting on agriculture it is affecting on our health because now we do not have sufficient amount of pure water that means uh, fresh water to drink then another one for energy now last uh, several months earlier we experienced that one we do not have sufficient amount of that uh, water to generate electricity by hydro power in that uh, stations right and other thing is forests then it is affecting that forest as the well, what is that condition of soil loss right now those are the major things so basically what we have to do better to manage this condition so that is we called as drought disaster management then any disaster we can't control now. we can't control natural disaster but we could be able to ready for that one and we have to manage right and getting ready for that condition number one what is that one is readiness that means if we expecting in a drought so this kind of silent disaster we have to be ready ancient kings did that one how they did during the rainy season they construct big lakes reservoirs blocking and they store more water 
and they could be able to use they mean dry period so that is readiness right now do we do like that yes no have you seen there is a dam and prepare that uh, storing water in that uh, halial area yes or no when you that go to badul area you can see there is a water purification plant there now what's happen today is totally filled with mud and sand people walking on there and now they are uh, doing fishing also you can see then it already constructed less than 5 years no now it's totally filled with mud and sand but what can you say about the, the parakram samudra how many years more than 500 years but the mud collection is very low even less than that what and there is a technology that our ancient people use but today what to do even we can manage five years it's already filled with mud and sand so then to it so there are some technology for everything then another thing is mitigation of damages caused by disaster that means now we have to be ready if some sort of that problems arise now what sort of actions we have to take another one adaptive shall to live in the disaster that means if there is that kind of condition occurs how do we survive how do we manage the consumption of water how do we manage our agriculture like that. right now several techniques we can use now you know that in dry zone we can use some that clay pots buried in the ground in uh, over a line because we can't do water in why we due to the sunlight it get quickly evaporated no but when we use some clay pots in time to uh, place to place place then we are growing plants closer to the clay pots then we can fill water there then clay pots is gradually wet the surrounding soil inside it then it will provide water gradually to the plants just like that some method oh we are mentioning drip draining methods we can use that means we can send uh, that water pipes there and just closer to the plant only we are making small hole and releasing water drop by drop so that okay just like that okay so some of the measures that can be taken in drought disaster management number 2 we should avoid the wastage that is number 1 and pollution of water and other thing is now this one that provided by the government but there are so many weaknesses sir now tell me what are weaknesses in what are weaknesses oh. now several months just imagine now there is a what is it drought condition then suddenly receiving rain yeah. suddenly receiving rain then it will washing this whole the roofing area washing and that washed water is get collected to the gutters and enter into the spot then all dust and everything move into where into the spot then there should be what is it filtering unit here no? at the beginning now we have to stop it and until what is it that uh, we get mm. until we get what is it clean water just like that now we have to do some actions right before we collecting the water for this one and this water collected rain water we can use for what is it for washing purpose and to cultivate small small that uh, agricultural items that we use in our daily life just like chili and other small small plants we can cultivate in hope that uh, home garden level right and planning agricultural activities with the view of conservation of water i told you that one right and improving the method of collecting rain water there right now those are the major conditions so by using these kind of planning now we can overcome certain conditions which affect it in our life with droughts number 2 what is that floods What is mineral flood? How do we describe it? Hmm? 
What is mean by flood? Huh? Think about. Yeah. How do we describe that? Huh? Due to heavy rains, okay. And within short period of time also, okay. Then what would be happen? Lamai, do within a short period of time, if the uh, if water get collected more to the water source, just like lakes, rivers, streams, ponds, any other water bodies receiving large amount of water within short period of time due to the heavy rains. Then that uh, insufficient space in there. Then what will happen? The water get overflow and cover the normal land area with water. That is we call the flood condition. Ordinary land area covered with overflow water. That is we mentioned normally. What is that? Flood condition. Now we are learning that one in even grade 6 also. Right? Now here you can see Look at here. Normally at the beginning, it is a what is that land area, but in little period of time, due to heavy rains, more water added to the water body. Then that water body is containing insufficient space to bear up such amount of water. Then the water gets overflow. Then the land area gets covered with water. So that condition we call as what is that? Flat condition. Okay. Right now, here, according to the way of occurrence, they can be categorized below. Flood due to overflowing. Right? These floods occur due to the overflowing of rivers and other waterways. Number two, instantaneous flood. That means just like Ratnapur area, Kalambu area, it happened like this. What is that? This situation occurs due to the blockage of water drainage system. That means if there is an urban area, they are making some construction by blocking the drain. Then due to heavy rain, water added to the draining system, drainage system, but unable to flow. Then the drain system overflow. That is also we call as only that flood. Okay. And rain over a long period, more than a large snowfall melts. There are many different types of flooding which fall under three main categories. The first results from overflow. After heavy rain, a river can burst its banks. The water can engulf entire valleys far from the precipitation zone. Other tributaries add to the flow of water, worsening the deluge further downstream. The second type of flooding involves the accumulation of water in lowlands or basins. In normal weather conditions, water is absorbed into the ground and merges with the water table. When the ground is saturated, water builds up in low-lying areas. Runoff then quickly fills the valley and its waterways. The third type is caused by urbanization in flood-prone areas. Excess water passing through drainage systems can accumulate in low-lying zones. This effect is worsened by the coverage of land with buildings and impermeable surfaces such as concrete. Less water can be absorbed into the ground, overloading sewers. Right, now those are the heat of flood condition taken place. Right, number one, what is the major reason, Lama? That is high rainfall. Other one is blockage of water drainage system and other thing is removal of forest cover and what is that? Irregular land use, not in proper land use and other thing is reduction of capacity of the reservoirs. It is filled with mud and the sand. It may be happen. And other thing is irregular land filling. Now you know that there are some areas we call marshy lands. <coughs> marshy land means Lanamai, we call that, what is that? Sponge of the environment. That is because sponge of the environment. Sponge means now what do we use for the for sponge? What we can use? When we put into water, it absorbs water. Then these marshy lands, what will happen? Then they are absorbing water. But remember what will happen? 
If the marshy lands are we are covering with soil, garbage, and other kinds of material and fat, and we are doing some construction on it. Now that Kalambu area, especially that uh, Rathmalan, Aptidi area, right? Now even that Kumana, right? Now you know that there are that uh, good environmental beauty also there with birds. But that most of the area is covered with what? Yes, covered with human constructions. So unable to absorb water to such environment. So flooding takes place. Right? Right. Then irregular construction works. Now those are the major things, right? I mean. Then what are the influences due to the flood condition? Now you may experience these days now when you watch news. Number one, loss of lives. Number two, failure of power supply. Number three, damage to the house of property and roads. That is one thing. And another thing is spread of communicable disease, just like we can mention malaria, dengue. Why? They are having plenty of breeding areas. Why water collected areas more in the environment? So such kind of vectors may be increased so that uh, the strength of the spreading of such diseases also increase. Right? Remember that. So how do we manage this condition? Management. Having prepared disaster kit, that means if there is sudden flooding taken place, we have to take such disaster kit and we have to move on. So basic needs already included there. What are the things uh, in uh, that uh, disaster kit? Drinking water, then dry food stuff, just like biscuit packets and all, right? And other thing is essential items. That means now uh, even that uh, torch operating with batteries, even small radio to listen to the mass media, to listen about the announcements, just like that. Now you remain. Then battery powered radio and refraining from the walking through the fast flowing water. Now you may have heard that uh, recently, now there was a person in our school, that child's uh, father, uh, that uh, near that Vallavaya and the Banangal area. While that flowing water through that bridge, he used that uh, just dry dips that uh, by through it, get with water, right? Here, just flow down with water and finally found the dead body as well as damaged bicycle road. So that vehicles can move, can bicycle can move then? Then he is too uh, urgent to come home. But he is unable to come home. Okay. Right, refraining from the driving motor vehicles across the plant area. And uh, I think that few months earlier, the vehicle is driving now. We can't see the road, no? We can see open air. They are there. Uh, out of the road they are driving. They know it's four stuff. Right. Sometimes they are that watching the two sides and they are that successfully moving, but it is dangerous. Okay. Right, remember that. Then refraining from the putting houses, uh, putting up houses in flood areas, and other thing is leaving partially uh, inundated houses as it is dangerous to stay there. And another thing is when you constructing that uh, particular house in such areas, what we have to do? We have to construct a beam and we have to prepare our house with a certain height. Then no problem. Right? Disconnecting the electric supply during that period. It will be an otherwise now the water may receive electricity and it may serve our body. And another thing is having identified place and meter to keep the goods and security that securely during the plant. That means we have to select some location, even within the house, with a higher area, and see that we have to keep the things that we want to save this for important documents, then uh, good stuff, right? 
to use during that period. Okay. Then next one is these days we are experiencing. What is that? That is called earth slip, so landslides. Then we can measure what is the meaning of that. Slipping down of soil layers in slope regions in highlands can be considered as a landslide. Now you may see those things frequently in these days. Right? So, what is the reason for that one, Lamai? That one also, one reason is heavy rains. Right? The places of uh, landslide come in districts, what is the major one? That is Madhuri. Madhuri at the top. Then, Noarelia, Matale, Candy, as well as Hale. Right? So, we are the number one. The most famous natural disaster in our area. Then, even Monaragala, Purunagala, Ratnapura, Kalutara, all as well as Mathara also we can identify. Okay? Even Ambatara. In this one, well, it would seem you could trust. It would be the ground beneath your feet. Lightning, hail, and other natural disasters come from above, but what you're standing on will always support you, right? Well, if you ever find yourself in the wrong place at the wrong time, then you just might find yourself victim to a tremendous landslide. Whether it's caused by an earthquake or soil erosion, landslides happen all over the globe. Sometimes they happen in remote areas, far away from any people. Other times, it's a real shame someone decided to set up shop on that specific part of land. From a highway in Japan to houses being swept into the ocean, here are five massive landslides caught on camera. One of the scariest things about landslides is that they usually happen without warning. But on very rare occasions, when these signs do appear, indicating that disasters on the horizon. Along the stretch of highway near the city of Oto, Japan, engineers noticed that there were cracks forming in the roadway. Over the course of a few weeks, the cracks would get a little bigger. As this section of road was built on the side of a steep mountain, engineers knew that this could be a warning sign that the ground below it was breaking free and starting to slide. These things were noticed in February of 2004, and it was enough to cause the closure of the entire road. Movements were monitored by extensive units, and the data showed that the ground was surely creeping in a downward motion, inch by inch. Cameras were also set up by the government to monitor the area. Finally, on August 10th of that year, the stress became too much, and the entire side of the mountain broke free. As you can see in the video, thousands of cubic meters of earth tumbled down the side of the mountain, dragging trees along with it in one of the craziest natural disasters we've ever seen. It is believed that the rainfall of a typhoon that struck earlier in the year saturated the ground so much that the soil nearly turned to liquid itself. Thanks to the watchful eye of engineers and scientists, the area had been evacuated many months before this landslide. So, there were no casualties or injuries of any kind. Believe it or not, landslides are actually a very common occurrence throughout the world. But have you ever stopped to ask yourselves why you've not heard much more about them? If they're so common, it would probably be bigger news, right? In actuality, Many. Okay. Now, one, I will show you this one. It can be triggered by powerful earthquakes. However, this video documents this a totally different landslide that was not caused by either of these factors. 
It was caused by a phenomenon known as quick play. And now check this one how it is moving square feet of land in okay, yeah. to slip into the sea a man named Jan Eagle Vakabi who filmed the landslide described the event I had just made two sandwiches when I heard creaking at first, I thought there was someone in the attic, but then I looked out the window and saw the power oh, exactly. was ripping and the ground was moving. He watched helplessly as the ground started moving towards the sea, carrying everything on the land with it. Eventually, once it reached the sea, the ground sunk beneath the surface. Along with trees and power lines, there were about eight structures as well, all of which were left floating freely on the surface of the water. Luckily, there was no one killed or even injured. Only one dog was on the land when it gave way, and he was able to swim to safety. How it is going? This kind of different different landslides with an identical right. Look at here. What happening during the landslide is a slipping down of lump of soil or the layer of soil upon another under the gravity. Then here you can identify what would be happen. The soil so rainwater and become what is that heavy because now you know that. Ordinary soil sample, when we get at some water, it is getting heavier, right? Number two, the bond between the soil particle and the bedrock is what is what we have getting weak. That means now, if there is a, a land area here under there is a bedrock, lamai, they are that uh, absorb water get collected on the bedrock. Then the soil and the bedrock between them, there is a water. And they are what that uh, dissolve in that dissolve in that soil and making a muddy water table there. Then slipping down that whole amount, right? Now that thing happened due to the weakened bond. There is a point that the bedrock cannot hold the upper soil layer further. Then what will happen at the moment? Yes, the soil particles start to flow down suddenly with the soil particles near the activity region join with the flow. Okay, that the thing happened here. So these are the regions that we can identify where landslides may occur. Right? Only few areas safer than that. But all the what are that mountain areas affecting for that process. Okay. Now this is the most important for the people that are living with the landslides, just like us. What are they? Number one, receiving more than 100 millimeters of rainfall within two hours and continuous rain about three days, like these days. Then appearing new cracks on the surface of the slope. Now we can see some cracks are forming on the wall, right? That slope area, then you have to be aware. Number two, appearing cracks on buildings. Number three, what is that? Depressions on the some depressions we can identify. And another one, what are they? Drying of planting trees. Normally, that uh, if there is a planted area, but trees growing like that, no? in erect form, no? but sometimes we can identify this planting. 
then that is mean there is a prior side book land slide and another thing is sudden leaking of muddy water that means new springs are forming from the slope area but not clean water that is muddy water why that uh, under the water bed soil dissolved and forming muddy water right and sudden surface run of water and disappearing of springs that means now water that uh, entering into the ground suddenly we can't identify an animal showing abnormal behaviors so normally animal can sense this during the that tsunami condition also no one no any animal get died there why because when they when this that uh, phenomenon taken place animals they move far away from the sea they run away even there are some unusual behaviors the animals and dogs within the cages and houses why they feel that one okay and appearing of new water springs suddenly that the water spring is forming the slope area near your house you have to be careful right sometimes ah, very good now there is a spring i can make a place and i can get water free now don't think about that because that is a prior sign for land slide there and entering water in the cracks of the earth and oozing out from the some other place that means from one place entering and another place it is appearing so that is also dangerous right remember so those are the things that you need to understand about prior signs so what are the things that we can do during a landslide number 1 what is that remove the slide of initiation area that means we have to move away that is the most important thing that the life is the most important thing rather than the property okay right then other thing is there are three main risk areas in landslide right that means what are they initiation area flow path and depositional area mana varu thole initiation the place where it's occurring and another thing is flow path it is flowing path there that is also dangerous and deposition means get stop there that area also dangerous right then evacuate the people from the area subjected to the landslide earlier it let area also to be established that is very important factor another one is what is that breaking down water using pipe have you seen that perils in the area there is a possibility to that make a landslide then what they did here they make some what is that drainage system and sending water downwards then you can check your neighbor houses now they are having that uh, even that when you go through the even from punagal road also some houses they are that uh, just open their drainage system to the wall slope area just to the wall then it will break down and up to the foundation of the building also and they are neglecting that so it will affect that they have to move away from the why because they are using what is that shortcut to release water they are just sending the water to the road but it is affecting for them also okay and another thing is they need on to a ditches and uh, drain water down slow without letting the soak into so that means we have to cut a suitable drainage system according to the landscaping right and another thing is we have to, what is that we have to make uh, that uh, cuttings in that uh, hilly area or slope area with the cascade module right properly by using the that contour uh, level then now we can avoid this cutting okay right those are the things right now take whether any doubts there